Hello and welcome everyone. In this course, we are going to discuss about unified CCX software and database components. We will be discussing about the four different software components that are available with unified CCX. And after that, we will be discussing about the four different database components or data stores that are available with the UCCX. At the end of this section, we will be discussing about the recording and monitoring components in DAP. And I also have a few animations for you to better understand about the how recording and monitoring components work in UCCX. With that said, let's go ahead and take a look at the next slide. So there are four software components that are available with UCCX. The first one is the unified CCX engine, which is a kind of mandatory component that should be enabled on all the servers in the cluster. And the next one is the database component, which should be also a mandatory and it should be enabled on all the servers. And next two are monitoring and the recording, which are the optional software components that can be enabled or disabled uh, in the cluster. So unified CCX engine, which is the first software component, which provides um, the core functions like ACD, uh, like automatic call distribution to the agents can be based on their um, skills or it can be based resource group or it can be agent based routing. And also it provides IVR functions like collecting the digits, queuing the callers, etc. And also it provides other functions of such as CDI services. Let's take a look at the second software component, which is the database components, which consists of four data stores, the configuration data store, repository data store, agent data store, and historical data store. So the configuration data store holds the configuration information, uh, which almost carry all the configuration information in the UCCX, such as the resources, the agent related configuration. So, uh, what is the agent name? What is the recorded name of the agent? And the skills, what are the skills that are configured in UCCX? And what is the different skill levels for the agents? And resource groups, what are the different resource groups that are configured? A team, uh, how many teams that are configured? And uh, what are the supervisor? What is the primary and secondary supervisor for the team? And the CSQs, which is the contact service queue. The next one is the repository data store, uh, which stores the prompts or the wave files that we uploaded through the prompt management and the script, uh, which can be uh, either the system default script or the custom uploaded script to the repository and the grammar and documents. The grammars are especially useful for those automated speech recognition text to um, speech functions. Uh, which would be uh, available through third-party servers like Nuance and also the XML and HTTP documents. For example, those XML documents can be used in scripts uh, for verifying the holidays. Instead of using uh, the script-based steps to provide the information about the holidays, we can write the holidays dates in an XML file and that can be referred in a script. Whenever the script executes, it can go and check if today is holiday or not with the help of the XML file. If today is holiday, we can, we can treat the call in a different manner. So the next one is the agent data store, uh, which provides the agent logs and statistics. And also it provides information about the recording URL of the recorded calls. In, in in the future slide, we will discuss more about the recording and software, sorry, recording and monitoring components. When the agent calls are recorded, uh, they, they would be stored in the local hard disk of the UCCX. This agent data store provides information about the location of those recordings so that that can be retrieved by the Cisco supervisor desktop from his application. The next one is a historical data store, which contains a contact call detail record. I hope we discussed about the call contact detail record in the last section of unified CCX call flow. So once the agent finish up this call, um, that means every resources that was utilized are released. And then the UCCX would write the contact call detail record about the call 
uh, to the historical data store so that at the later point of time this information can be retrieved from the historical reporting client such as historical reporting client and CUIC from any workstations by the historical uh, capable reporter. So in this section, we're going to discuss about the monitoring and recording components of UCCX. Cisco Unified CCX enhanced and premium packages allows the supervisor to silently monitor the agent call and it also allows the agent call to be recorded. Agent call recording can be triggered in three different ways. Either the supervisor can click the record button on the Cisco Supervisor desktop for a specific agent call or the agent himself can click the record button on the Cisco agent desktop or from the IP phone agent which is a service which would be available in IP phones. Or as an administrator we can configure the workflows through Cisco administration desktop and it automatically triggers the complete call to be recorded. And Cisco Unified CCX provides two different mechanisms to monitor and record the calls of the agents. Let's go ahead and take a look at those in details. We have a small topology here where we have a UCCX and the Cisco voice switches and we have an IP phones and two agents are connected behind those phones using the PC port on the phones. We also have the Cisco Supervisor desktop here which is connected to the switch and you can see the legends here. We will be seeing some animations here. If you can understand this you would be able to better understand how the packet flows exactly happen when we monitor or record in the UCCX environment. So you can see here the kind of uh, light orange color box which, which says the span source port. These are the span source ports that are available here and the la dark red color which is a span destination port which is here and the RTP from caller to agent whenever the agent established the RTP between the caller we would see two different RTP stream. One is from the agent to the caller out in the PSTN and the other RTP stream is comes from the caller out from the PSTN towards the agent. These are two different RTP uh, packet that we would see. The LO is from caller to the agent that is from the outside PSTN towards the agent and the green is from the agent to the caller outside on the PSTN. And also we will look at the purple color RTP packets. Uh, which are for RTP from monitoring component to the CST. That means the monitoring component would be present here in the UCCX and the supervisor desktop here. So the, the RTP packets of violet or purple would flow in this direction. For span based recording or we can say network based recording or monitoring which requires a switch which is capable of creating span sessions. Span is nothing but the switch port analyzer. What does it do is we can configure a port as a source span ports. We can have multiple source ports and we can have one destination port. What does it do is whenever the source span port see a packet it can be either the transmitted packet or the received packet or both the transmitted and received packet. What does it do is whenever it sees a packet it duplicate or mirror those packets and send those packets out through the span destination port. So what is connected to the span destination port? So we have the UCCX that is connected on the span destination port. UCCX doesn't support a separate NIC card for the span based monitoring and recording. The UCCX have to utilize the existing network port for both the span based recording as well as the other normal network traffic that is being generated and terminated to the UCCX such as the communication between the CAD and the CCX or the communication between the CCX and the CUCM or the RDP that would be established uh, between the CCX and gateways all every other traffic should also flow through the single port as the UCCX doesn't support a separate NIC for span based monitoring and recording. 
Let's say for an example, there is a call that is already established between this phone and the caller out on the PSTN. We can see those here, what those green packets are generated from the agent towards the caller out on the PSTN and those yellow packets are coming from the caller outside on the PSTN towards the phone. We can see that here, whenever this port sees the packets, it would duplicate those packets and send the duplicate of those packets out via the destination port. You can see here, this is the actual transmission, RTP transmission, two-way RTP transmission that is happening between the agent and the caller and this packets are, and these packets are the duplicate packets that is being sent by the span session that we configured in the switch. And keep in mind that the span would work only on the local switch. If the source port is on a different switch and the destination port on the different switch, then it is not supported or we can say the switch, sorry, the phones and the UCCX all should be connected on the same switch. That is the limitation of the span. If you have the environment where the phones are in a different switch and the server is on a kind of core switch, you have to go for R span, which is remote span, which spans, which, which provides a span function across multiple switches. So we can see here, those packets are duplicated and sent out to the destination port where UCCX monitoring components is receiving those packets. So whenever the supervisor desktop or whenever the contacts in the supervisor want to listen to those calls, want to monitor those calls, what he would do is he would go ahead and click the silent monitor button on the CSD. Whenever he do it, what happened is the monitoring component on the CCX would forward those RTP packets, the combined RTP packets out to the supervisor desktop so that he can listen to those streams or he can monitor those streams silently through the sound card on his workstation. So you can see that the UCCX monitoring components are sending those purple or violet color RTP packets out to the Cisco supervisor desktop which is actually a combined RTP stream or two-way RTP stream that is being established between the agent and caller which is being sent by the monitoring component toward the CST. So let's go ahead and take a look at desktop-based monitoring. So in the last section, we discussed about the fan-based monitoring. What if somebody wants to, what if the supervisor want to do the recording but that is based on span? So how do we do that? In that case, the monitoring components is receiving those yellow and green color streams that are coming from the callers and the agent, right? So what does the monitor component do is, it sends those stream out to the recording component that is available on the same server so that it can convert those streams and make those streams as a recording file that can be later pulled by the Cisco supervisor through the Cisco supervisor desktop. Let's come back to the desktop based monitoring again. We can see the same infrastructure here. In this case, the yellow and green color RTP streams are going to be the same, but the purple or violet color RTP streams are sent from the phone to the CAD. And the dark red color RTP streams are sent from the CAD out to the CST. This is desktop based monitoring. We doesn't need the monitoring components here and also the switch doesn't have to support the span based configuration. So let's see here, we are seeing the packets are being generated by the phones and the callers and that is being exchanged. The two way RDP streams are exchanged between the phones and callers. In desktop based monitoring, the agent with the Cisco agent desktop should be connected behind the phone and the PC to span port should be enabled on the phone so that whatever packet that is being seen by phone are duplicated and sent out to the Cisco agent desktop which is connected behind the phone. So whenever the supervisor desktop want to monitor, monitor those calls, what does he do is he simply go ahead and click the monitor or silent monitor button on the CST. So what does it happen is CAD would forward those RDP streams out to the Cisco supervisor desktop. For this, 
for this desktop monitoring to work we don't have to have the monitoring component to work but at least the VoIP monitor service should be enabled and should be up and running on the UCCX server so that it can retrieve the MAC address and should be able to forward those packets out from the Cisco agent desktop to the Cisco supervisor desktop and he can listen those streams from the headphone or whatever kind of device he has he can connect to the sound card and he can listen to that for the span based monitoring or recording and uh, span desktop based monitoring the supervisor doesn't need any phone uh, to avail this function because these these REB streams are sent out to his PC where he can listen from the sound card through through a headset or whatever he has let's go ahead and take a look at desktop based recording it's almost similar to desktop based monitoring instead we can see these two way streams are sent out to the phone uh, sorry sent out to the Cisco agent desktop whenever the either the supervisor or the agent want to record their call what they can do is they can click the record button which is available on the Cisco agent desktop or it is also available on the Cisco supervisor desktop either one of them can click the record button and what does it do is it will make the cat to forward those RTP stream out to the recording component of the Cisco UCCX you can see here these red RTP packets are forwarded by the cat out to the recording components of the Cisco UCCX server hope you all enjoyed this session and thanks so much for watching